Welcome into episode 154 of The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. I'm Ken Ray. And I'm August Rometer. Warnings from Facebook about warnings about Facebook. <laughs> Amazon, your neighbors, and the police want to put a ring on it. And when smart things turn dumb. I feel like we've said that a time or two before. <laughs> Hey, grab your righteous indignation and bring it along as Secure Mac presents another edition of The Checklist. Well, it sounds like Facebook users on iPhone and iPad are about to get a serious look at just how many times the social network wants to know where they are and what they're doing. Each new version of iOS seeks to bring privacy improvements, and next week's iOS 13 release is no exception. In an effort to keep users informed about how their data is used, Apple's next mobile operating system is throwing up some warnings that seem to have gotten under Facebook's skin. CNBC says Facebook has published a blog post about how the Facebook app uses location data and how often iOS users will hear about it. According to CNBC, iOS 13 will provide a pop-up that informs users about how many times an individual app has used background location over the past few days. Now, given the amount of information that we know Facebook hoovers up, I'm picturing a practically unusable <laughs> app after this. Well, you know, Apple has warned about this, uh, saying there'd be more frequent notifications. I think they really recognize that location is a huge piece of data about somebody. And they want to make sure that you're in control, not somebody else. So uh, instead of dialog boxes that you just tap to make go away, uh, they're putting up multiple notifications in hopes that you read at least one of them. Um, I'm not sure it's the right solution, but it's better than what we had. And I've seen this on some apps that I use, uh, weather apps especially, because they constantly use your location, uh, you know, every time you access your weather data. So I I've seen these notifications. Um, does it make the app unusable in, the in Facebook's case? I don't think so, um, but it will give you an idea of how often Facebook wants to use your location. Um, if you trust Facebook, why would you? Um, <laughs> you can still give it the while using the app permission. Um, the problem is Facebook wants to track you 100% of the time, even when you're not using the app. Uh, in current builds of iOS uh, beta, um, that's not an option, at least not on, on my phone. CNBC cites statements from Apple senior VP of software engineering Craig Federighi, who explained the upcoming changes last June at WWDC. There and then, he said, sharing your location with a third-party app can really enable some useful experiences, but we don't expect to have that privilege used to track us. He said that Apple would enable a feature that allows iPhone users to provide location privileges just one time instead of when the app is in use, never or always the previous options. Federighi went on to say, if you do choose to grant an app the ability to continually monitor your location in the background, we will give you reports so you will know what they are up to. I guess it's that allow one time part that leads me to picture a practically unusable application. I mean, I'm figuring that would mean a pop-up every 30 seconds or less in Facebook's case. Uh, maybe. Uh, it really depends on how Facebook changes their app. Uh, it also depends on how Apple has implemented that. I know in the past, uh, when somebody says no to location, they just sort of bury it and they don't ask you again. Um, you got to remember, Facebook at one time was working on their own mobile phone. Um, imagine what a privacy nightmare that would have been. Uh, they just want to harvest all of your data. Um, I don't think they're in the business of making their apps unusable. So they're going to change the app so they get all the rest of that data. A couple of other things to let you know. First, it's not just Apple doing this or, or taking steps like it. Facebook says Android is offering users a more restrictive stance where sharing their location is concerned which is to say Android is making it possible to turn such functions off more easily. 
Second, Facebook does make the case for why it wants the info it wants. In a sort of machines of loving grace opening to its post, (laughs) the social network says Facebook is better with location. It powers features like check-ins and makes planning events easier. It helps improve ads and keep you and the Facebook community safe. Features like find Wi-Fi and nearby friends use precise location, even when you're not using the app, to make sure that alerts and tools are accurate and personalized for you. I will say that's a much softer pitch than, you know, Facebook is tracking your every move. And and I also... Everything Facebook says could be said to be true, or you could make the case for each of those statements being true, uh, except it's Facebook saying it. I mean, it feels <laughs> like it's just a little too much sugar coating. I, I totally agree. I'd love to see the statistics of people who use check-ins. I'd love to see statistics of people who use these other features. Uh, if it were any other company, I'd be more inclined to feel at least a little sorry for them. But you're right. This is Facebook. The company that has testified before Congress about privacy violations multiple times. Uh, So to me, this statement from them just rings a little hollow. Now, I'm trying to figure out what the end result is here. Uh, Do you think, I'm going to give you uh, three choices. Uh, People get freaked (laughs) Uh out and drop off Facebook. Uh, People get used to a pop-up every 10 seconds or less. Or people let Facebook track them 24-7. And read the location reports first with horror, then with annoyance, and then, you know, start ignoring them like we do in terms of service (laughs) and things like that. Uh, I'm going to go with people allowing Facebook to track them 24-7 if Apple adds that option back in. Um, As I said, it's a nice step by Apple to do all of this, but I don't think it's going to solve the problem. Um, People like the the social networks that they use, and if Facebook keeps asking for location sooner or later, people are just going to give that data away so they can keep using their social network. Let's talk about your gut feeling on this. Um, Is Apple trying to make the Facebook mobile experience more difficult so that people will walk away from it? I mean, are they trying to scare people, or is Apple literally just trying to inform I I really don't think this is a shot across the bow at Facebook. Um, Keep in mind that Apple's own apps uh, are being subjected to some of these same policies. Um, You get a lot of the same notifications you do with Apple apps as you do with Facebook. Uh, I think they're just trying to prevent all of the other things that people can do with location. I mean, remember what Uber was doing when they were tracking you 100% of the time, and then they had employees that were tracking celebrities and ex-girlfriends and that kind of thing. Um, Every time you give your location data away, you're giving a big piece of information to somebody else. Near the end of Facebook's post, the social network says, you're in control of who sees your location on Facebook. You can control whether your device shares precise location information with Facebook via location services a setting on your phone or tablet. In other words, it's not us, it's you. (laughs) You know, I feel like the only real concrete reason Facebook has given to use your location is serving you better ads, which no one really wants. Uh, The other stuff, like keeping the Facebook community safe, that kind of thing is so vague uh, that it's obvious, at least to me, They're worried more about their income stream, not some nebulous service to the community. Um, My advice, don't share your location with Facebook. And then, of course, you know, you telling the world and Facebook or you telling Facebook, thus the world where you are, is still an option and one upon which Facebook will seize in their whole sharing your location is your choice missive. Facebook points out. We may still understand your location using things like check-ins, events, and information about your internet connection. All of which makes me miss Friendster. We'll revisit Internet of Things things in a moment, but first a word about MacScan 3 from Secure Mac. Gone are the days when simply having a Mac was all the security protection you needed. Actually, those days never existed, but we can't even pretend anymore. 
More and more people are using Macs, which means more and more hackers are trying to hack in. In fact, the number of malicious files for Macs has increased exponentially over the past several years. You need to stay ahead of the bad guys, and MacScan 3 can help. MacScan 3 is a great defense against malicious software attacks aimed at your Mac. It's developed by Secure Mac, trusted names in computer security and developers of exceptional security software for 20 years and counting. MacScan 3 detects and removes Mac malware, catches keyloggers, removes tracking cookies, and provides full range or targeted scanning, all without crowding up your hard drive or slowing down your machine. Get the gunk off your computer with MacScan 3 from Secure Mac. Sign up for a free 30-day trial today at securemac.com slash MacScan. That's MacScan 3 by Secure Mac. Your 30-day free trial is waiting at securemac.com slash MacScan. Mending Wall 2.0 If you have smart home at all, you've heard of Ring. They make smart, a.k.a. web-connected, doorbells and security cameras. The formerly independent company was bought by Amazon in early 2018. Amazon, a known collector of information, did something kind of scary with Ring, though it's a thing that Ring was actually already up to. Amazon's bigger, though, so Amazon could do it on a bigger scale. Two months after Amazon bought Ring, it launched an app for Android and iOS. Called Neighbors the sort of social, sort of anti-social network built on Ring's existing neighborhoods feature, according to a 2018 piece from VentureBeat. By spinning out a dedicated Neighbors app, the piece said in 2018, Ring hopes to create and harness a community akin to a neighborhood watch organization. Through Neighbors, the piece says, you can access local crime and safety information, view videos shared by Ring security camera owners, and share text-based messages as you would in a social network. And you can be an ad hoc part of the police state. <laughs> it's not an entirely peer-driven community, however, as police departments and law enforcement services can sign up to neighbors to share their own data through the platform. Or add to their data trove, it would seem to me. You know, any time you give data away, even video from a doorbell, you never know who is looking at that data. And it's so easy to say, well, I'm doing it for the good in the neighborhood, but you don't know what repercussions giving that data away has. Uh, to participate in Ring's Neighbors Community, the piece says you can join your neighborhood through the app and tailor the specific geographic area you want to be part of. Then you can receive alerts from law enforcement and neighbors keeping you up to date on crime and safety in your locale. VentureBeat says Ring partnered with the L.A. Police Department way back in 2016 to install Ring video doorbells in 10% of homes in select neighborhoods. And the company has continued to view these kinds of partnerships as integral to its community growth. If consumers see law enforcement actively engaging with a service such as Ring, they may be more inclined to choose Ring over a rival service. Quoted in the piece, Ring founder Jamie Simonoff, who said, Over the past few years, we have learned that when neighbors, the Ring team, and law enforcement all work together, we can create safer communities. Neighbors is meant to facilitate real-time communication between these groups while maintaining neighbor privacy first and foremost. By bringing security to every neighbor with the free Neighbors app, communities can stay on top of crime and safety alerts as they happen. I'll point out two things. Uh, the first is no stats are offered on Ring creating safer communities. And second, I don't see how putting up a literal ring of Ring cameras that's shared with your neighbors and the police can possibly maintain neighbor privacy uh, first and foremost. That was first and yeah, check in the notes. First and foremost, they say. Um, I can't really see how. Yeah, I love that privacy is equated with a camera pointed from across the street into somebody else's living room window. Yeah. Um, and, you know, how creepy is it that somebody brings, a, you know, some young couple brings a girl home from a date and shares a first kiss and the entire neighborhood can watch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about that, but that is also creepy. Yeah. Uh, now, I don't have details, but, you know, were those 10 percent of the homes notified that they were sharing video with law enforcement? Maybe, maybe not. 
Um, you know, I'd hate for us to end up like England where there's a camera on every corner and lots of places you'd never expect. It's super easy to say those things are keeping you safe because, hey, I never do anything wrong. But one change in the law or the government and the next thing you know, you're living in Gilead and wearing red robes. Then those cameras become weapons. You know, I made a joke on a different show earlier this week. It can't happen here, August. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, I, I hate to be doom and gloom, but but really, uh, the the privacy implications of this are just terrible. As I say, this all happened a year and a half ago and earlier. And so people may be wondering why we're talking about it now. Well, it's come to the attention of U.S. Senator Ed Markey, Democrat of Massachusetts, that Ring's system doesn't necessarily work for racial minorities. Quoting a piece from last week from VentureBeat and a letter to Amazon Chief Executive Jeff Bezos, Markey said sharing information from Ring's at-home camera systems with police departments could easily create a surveillance network that places dangerous burdens on people of color and stoke racial anxieties in communities where it works with law enforcement. See, the problem is facial recognition technology has been shown to disproportionately misidentify people of color. In a 2018 American Civil Liberties Union study, recognition, that's Amazon's facial recognition program, uh, recognition incorrectly matched 28 members of Congress, including Markey, to a database of 25,000 publicly available arrest photos. Okay, so he's got an axe to grind then. I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Markey, the ranking member on the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Security, said he was alarmed to learn that Ring is pursuing facial recognition technology and that Amazon was marketing its facial recognition technology recognition to police departments. Markey cited civil liberties concerns about countless bystanders who may be unaware that they are being filmed by Ring cameras. I'm at a loss. I mean, I know where I stand on this, but I, I get the arguments. I get the arguments for it as well. Well, first of all, I'd, I'd like to point out that I think it's just a little bit weird. And I, I understand the trademark aspect of things. But recognition, which is Amazon's facial recognition system, is spelled with a K instead of a C. And that's troublesome to me. Um, not that they did it on purpose, but I mean, come on. Uh, uh, you, you see, you say that, but if Apple had spelled their app store A P P S T O R, they'd still be sitting on that trademark. <laughs> right. But I think this whole thing gets even worse because there are certain communities that can't afford video doorbells, and those neighborhoods could have high crime. You know, if the goal is to reduce crime and increase safety, isn't that where we should be helping out and targeting? Uh, again, I'm totally against cameras, you know, uh, especially doorbell cameras being used. But it seems hypocritical to only protect affluent neighborhoods that would buy high tech gadgets. And then since this is an Amazon product now, What's to stop them from, say, watching the video, analyzing the video, and see who else you're buying from so they can turn around and target those companies? You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just feeling grumpy today, but at this point, I would never buy a Ring. Now, the good news is Ring's terms of service indicate that all of these services, the neighbors thing, whether you make your videos available for viewing by Ring or others, if I'm reading their terms of service correctly... All of that is opt-in, so you don't have to share your recordings with anyone. But lots of people will, which is worth noting since you could be on one of those recordings just, you know, walking down the street. Also, Amazon has accidentally shared info it wasn't supposed to share in the past, and finally, you know, in terms of service, change. All of these things are worth remembering. Like a McDLT container, without the McDLT, oh sure, it'll keep the hot side hot and the cool side cool, but without the burger, what's the point? I said in the last segment that terms of service change, uh, sometimes so does the service itself. If you bought an Insignia Smart Freezer from Best Buy, 
It's about to turn dumb. The Verge ran a piece late last week saying Best Buy has quietly announced that the mobile app platform for controlling its Insignia brand of smart home devices, Insignia Connect, will be shutting down on November the 6th. The company says affected products will still function at a basic level, but any features that rely on its Insignia Connect app and platform will no longer work. The products include its Insignia smart wall plugs, Wi-Fi light switches, its smart camera, and its Wi-Fi freezer. Yes, a freezer. See, I thought it was a (laughs) fridge-freezer combo. Apparently, the freezer was just particularly dumb, and they thought, we got to do something. And then they were like, boy, were we dumb, because that's a freezer. I don't know. It's it's cold and it stores stuff. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I I really, you know, I kind of want to go. Except you can't read up on it anymore because I mean, to Best Buy's credit, they're not selling it, or at least they're not selling it as a connected thing anymore. All of their smart stuff, their insignia smart stuff, anyway, uh, has been pulled. It shows as discontinued on their website because I can't figure out. It, it never has my freezer done something that was like, you know what? <laughs> I need a freezer with an IQ, gosh darn it. (laughs) The good news is the wall plugs will still pass power through. The freezer will still keep things frozen. On a basic level, affected devices will still do what they do and keep doing it. Of the wall plug, for example, Best Buy says the Insignia Connect app functionality will not work, but any of the scheduled timers that were set up previously will continue to function. Additionally, the button on the plug will continue to function manually as an on-off switch if needed. Now, circling back to the ring thing, uh, The Verge says Best Buy is also advising any customers who use its Insignia Wi-Fi camera to download stored video clips before November 4th, two days before the overall Kinect shutdown, or else those clips will be lost forever. What's weird to me is... Like, if I see a product from a company I've never heard of, I think twice about buying that, especially if it's, you know, a pricey thing or a thing that's really important. Insignia is not the most prestigious brand, uh, but Best Buy is big, and Best Buy is not going anywhere anytime soon. And yet, you know, here they are going, yeah, sorry about all that smart stuff. Uh, It's really not going to be worth much to you anymore. (laughs) What sorts of things would you look for in buying a smart device? Well, you know, uh, first of all, anything on Kickstarter and the like is a roll of the dice, not just from a will I ever get the product point of view, but these little companies come and go all the time. So if you have something you depend on, unless it's self-contained and doesn't require back-end services in the cloud, it's a risk that it's not going to work after a while. That doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it, but it does mean that it might be short-lived. You know, beyond that, you know, looking for the company uh, that backs it is a good thing, but that's never a safe bet either, Uh, you know, as this shows. Well, yeah, I was going to say the Verge piece actually points to similar platform closures at home improvement chain Lowe's, which is huge and not going anywhere, and to Google's discontinuation of the Works with Nest program. Uh, Google, also huge, sadly, not going anywhere. Now, interestingly, some of these Insignia smart devices are also HomeKit compatible. Uh, That's Apple's HomeKit. So they should do some of the smart stuff even after Insignia Connect shuts down. I'm wondering between Apple's size and its stated commitment to privacy, would HomeKit compatibility be a thing that would sway you one way or the other? You know, Apple seems to be putting a good deal of resources into HomeKit, which makes me a lot more comfortable. But like any company... If something isn't profitable, Apple will shut it down. Companies exist to make a profit. Remember Ping or Dot .Mac? Um, those didn't work, so Apple put them out to pasture. And if HomeKit doesn't deliver, they're going to do the same thing. Now, I'm a little more comfortable with it, as I said, but I'm also a little leery about outfitting my house with all of this stuff and not knowing if it's going to work in a couple of years. While your freezer may be turning dumb, Best Buy is not leaving you in the cold. (laughs) (laughs) The Verge says that the retailer is running a reimbursement program for any unfortunate soul who decided to buy one of these products. Uh, No word yet on if they're, you know, giving people back the full amount or, you know, just part of it. I I picture the call going something like, well, it still freezes things, doesn't it? (laughs) (sighs) 
If you're looking for more security news and how-tos, the place to look is securemac.com slash checklist. There you'll find notes for this show, for all the shows we've done before, and you can listen to every single one of them right there. All in one place. Securemac.com slash checklist. If you have a question you'd like to ask or a topic you would like to hear us hit, our email address is checklist at securemac.com. The address again is checklist at securemac.com. And if you can't remember that, please do remember this. You're listening to The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. And we'll talk to you next week. Next week.